Many people have been shocked at the fact that two women were at the centre of this horrific case of abuse. Our home editor, Mark Easton, explains the scale of sexual abuse of children by women. Good evening. A woman who was trusted to look after babies and toddlers at a nursery in Plymouth has admitted sexually abusing children in her care, taking images of her victims and sharing the pictures with two accomplices she met on the internet. Vanessa George, who worked at Little Ted's Nursery in the city, appeared in court today where she pleaded guilty to a string of offences. Yes, and standing on either side of her were Angela Allen and Colin Blanchard. They too admitted offences of assault and making and distributing indecent images. The three who lived hundreds of miles apart in Plymouth, Nottingham and Rochdale texted thousands of obscene messages and sent more than a hundred pictures to each other over many months. But they hadn't met until today when they stood side by side in the dock. John Kay was in court and sent this report. The smiling face of Vanessa George. This is how she was known to her family and to the families at the nursery where she worked. But behind their backs, she was sexually abusing young children and taking photos of that abuse. Today, she was the one being photographed, but unlike her victims, she could turn away. If you could think of your average big bubbly woman, that was what she was like, friendly, funny, lovely. This mother had no idea. She trusted Vanessa George to look after her children. We have disguised her identity. There's no evidence her youngsters were among those abused by George here at the Little Ted's nursery in Plymouth, but she says the whole community has been left shattered. The worst feeling you could ever imagine. Feeling sick 24 hours a day, not being able to sleep, drinking during the day, and just going to to pick children up at the school and having mums and dads in tears and all having to hug each other. Vanessa George had been working with children for a decade. She had passed all the required checks. She was married with two teenage daughters. But secretly, she was a paedophile, sexually abusing babies and toddlers, taking photographs of that abuse on her mobile phone and sending the images to others. Some of the pictures categorised by police as being the worst level of child pornography. Today, with her hair back to its natural blonde, George stared at the floor as the court heard that none of the children in her images can be identified. So for parents, some of whom were sobbing in the public gallery, the agony goes on. Every time I look at the kids, I just wonder, did she abuse them? My husband won't talk about it but sometimes I see him sitting there crying. I know what he's thinking. It's horrendous. Vanessa George was urged by the judge to end the parents' uncertainty and identify her victims. Her motivation for not telling us at this time, we don't know. Obviously, the judge is quite clear that, in his opinion, the families will want to know. Um, and it is one of our priorities to continue even beyond this conviction today to try and identify those children. For Vanessa George's estranged father, it is still too much to take in. Every so often I think, why did she turn this way? What motivated her? It's just like as if Vanessa's lost her way. She's doing this obviously because for money. There's no other reason why she should behave like she has them. But the police don't think it was about money. They believe Vanessa George was motivated purely by sexual gratification. She'd met two other people on the internet, and today they met face to face for the very first time in the dock at Bristol Crown Court. The first was this man, Colin Blanchard, a businessman from Rochdale. He was arrested after a colleague found extreme images on his computer. He'd been on the sex offenders register before. After examining his emails, the police were led to Vanessa George in Plymouth and then to another woman, Angela Allen in Nottingham. She was also 39, single, unemployed and described by one detective as pure evil. Single mother Angela Allen contributed a series of explicit pictures showing her abusing a three-year-old girl. I just feel disgusted. I just can't believe that somebody 
as being on the doorstep, especially a woman, and that it doesn't make any difference whether it's a man or a woman, but I think the general reaction, the fact that it's a woman, has made, made it worse. I don't even think it was a gender issue. I think everybody felt helpless. Everybody. The police believe they were equal parties, all abusing children and sending thousands of obscene messages to one another and to nobody else. It's the scale of their deceit, the way that they've manipulated relationships and the cunning that they've all used for their own ends is really, really shocking. Child abuse in its most horrific and devilish form. Exactly how their relationship began still baffles the police. But one detective said it was as if they were involved in some kind of contest, competing to produce increasingly extreme images. So after meeting here in the dock for the very first time, the three defendants are now being taken away to separate prisons. They'll be back here for sentencing again next month. The judge told them all they face significant times in jail. John Kay, BBC News, at Bristol Crown Court. Many people have been shocked at the fact that two women were at the centre of this horrific case of abuse. Our home editor, Mark Easton, explains the scale of sexual abuse of children by women. The facts of this case challenge our understanding of human nature, not just the idea that people could find pleasure in the sexual abuse of very young children, but the revelation that women were involved. However, experts claim this kind of behaviour is not as uncommon as many suppose. A quarter of sexually abused children were the victim of a female, according to separate American and British studies. Although estimates vary, that would suggest a quarter of a million people in Britain today suffered sex abuse perpetrated by a woman. And yet such allegations are often disbelieved, and there are few prosecutions. In 2007, only six women in England and Wales were convicted of sex abuse crimes against children. Women abuse children for the same reasons that men abuse children, for sexual gratification, for power. Quite frankly, it's something that they enjoy doing. I know that's hard for the rest of us to comprehend, but women are no different than men in that case. A few weeks ago in Australia, a new TV campaign was launched warning of the risks of sex abuse from those entrusted with the care of children. Then they went to the school we thought was a safe place where a trusted person sexually assaulted Emma and Katie, silenced them with threats and changed their lives forever. The charity involved has calculated that almost a third of sex abuse by women takes place in an organisational setting, notably kindergartens and babysitting. The majority of such abusers are not coerced by a man, but initiate the abuse themselves. The damage can last a lifetime. The fear of police in Britain is that new technology has made all forms of child abuse easier and more commonplace. As in today's case, the internet allows paedophiles to communicate and share child pornography. Mobile phone cameras mean images can be shot and disseminated around the world within seconds. A kindergarten close to the Plymouth nursery involved in today's case is banning mobiles with cameras on its premises. But risk can never be eliminated. Background checks on staff won't spot men or women who've never abused before. But there is another danger too, that we allow fears about paedophilia to damage the relationship between all adults and children and to undermine the trust that makes communities function.